Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. I just got out of the shower because I just got off shift, but it is a very, very exciting day for the homestead. Today we are going to be hauling in the base rock material for the YouTube Yacht Project. I'm pretty daggone excited about it. It did rain a little bit last night and we're going to have a few challenges, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. You can hear the rooster, he's excited as well. But step one is going to be get the equipment rounded up. I've got the tractor over at the house, so we're going to take the tractor over there and we'll take a quick look at the road so we know what we're getting into. saying this this nut here applies pressure to that lever so it should hold itself up and yes there we are star of the show anyway i just need to adjust that nut and that nut it's not that big a deal though you can still come in and just pull the lever and it locks into place it has been working if you haven't seen that video i'll throw an info card up a buddy of mine named neil kof neil kof dig drive diy hooked me up well he did all the fabrication for that quick attach bucket and then an awesome subscriber named andy sent that actual part in for us so if you missed that on his channel be sure to go over and check it out but this is what we're working on if you're new to the channel by the way if you can see it there's the pond through the trees looking really nice this is the youtube yacht project the youtube yacht project is something my wife and i have wanted to do for a while we've always wanted to get into the rental cabin business Believe it or not, there is a pretty decent tourism industry where we're at here in Southern Indiana. So we decided to build a cabin out here in the woods, but because we're not on the river like some of the other cabins are, we thought something with a little bit of flair, a little bit of different feeling, whatever you want to say to it, might help attract customers. So we decided to shape it. Uh, originally, we were going to do a tow boat, and then we kind of changed it to a paddle wheeler is what we're looking at now, and that's kind of what we're going to go with. So it'll look just like, well, pretty similar to a paddle wheel boat. Anyway, that's the YouTube Yacht Project. That's what we're working on. I'm going to head back over, get my car. We're going to go down and pick up Dirt Perfect's C8500 tandem axle dump truck, get the 120 moved. we got to get some other stuff shuttled around, and then we're going to get to hauling this base rock. Okay. Let's get going. I'm gonna let that run for just a little bit. But while we're waiting, Mike has the 120 at his house already. He was doing some bush hogging around his property with the 120 and he said we need to bring a bucket up with us so we can dig that shirt. So we'll probably use that contraption there. Do a little bit of bucket shopping here. This is the one we normally take. I guess let's take that one. So we've got to take the trailer up anyway. I see the move the 120. So we're just gonna throw the bucket on the trailer, I think. Trailer has these fancy smancy ratchet straps on here. Makes things a little easier. Safety. Seat no. 
What do you say, Puck? What do you say? We're gonna take your excavator for a little bit, okay? We're gonna take your excavator for a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, you're tripping me. He got that injection pump fixed. I'm assuming he's probably gonna do a video on that at some point. He said it's good to go. But I have said things before as well, so let's just double check here. So we may just put a little bit of oil in that. All right, let's start the old girl up. We'll just leave that there for good luck today. Man. So this is Mike's bush hog that he modified a long, 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 long time ago to go on the end of the 120. He uses it to maintain his hill up there. Anyway, we are going to use that later this week. When I say we, I mean us. It's going to be a good time to mow the river camp road down there. So I'm going to go ahead and get it to the top of the hill so it's up there ready to go. take a second to just chain this down it took about 15 minutes I'm really not going that far honestly I typically don't chain down when I'm going from Mike's to Wade's house to the chirp pit but the decks a little wet there's definitely a lot of crap on our tracks right now this is this part's metal which is never good on tracks that's like working on ice and I don't mind being the mirror guy I do not want to be the just hold out the brand new redone refinished John Deere 120 guy that I'm not okay with so a little bit of extra insurance this morning Let's go.
little bit of a time constraint on these first two loads, maybe three loads, and then a little bit will come down and I'll kind of show you exactly, give you a close up view of what this material is. Say hi to the cows. I'll explain that time constraint in just a minute. I gotta get these first two loads up there. right here in the turn up here. Stuff does not like to spread very well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. So we're gonna try to back spread right through here. Let's see how it turns out. I need to put you guys on something so you can watch. I remember, like I said, this is my first time back spreading. I've spread forwards quite a bit and biggest thing there is you want to keep your gate loaded but not so loaded it's actually going over the top of it and you can go slow you can go fast there's personal preferences there I prefer to go slow personally the thing about back spreading the added thing is you want to, oh this is what you're gonna sit on this is the tripod you want to try to stay on the material the whole reason you're back spreading is because the base might be a little wet okay Right off the bat there we had just a little bit of an issue the go makers kind of quit making us go you'll see we spin around here as i pull forward it's just just slimy enough right there at the beginning before we actually get onto the good packed dirt so we didn't quite have a very good start and the bad thing about this is like i said when you spread you want to have that gate loaded but with the gate already open it's kind of hard to preload that gate so we're going to start out a little rocky but we'll give it our best kind of in a hurry to try to get that first load up there there is a cemetery on that road it's a small one but every now and then there are funerals there and I noticed they had some stuff set up this morning when I came home from shift so I talked to the gentleman undertaker I guess you'd call it I talked to the gentleman there that was getting everything set up and asked what time they were coming through and I wanted to try to get a load up before they actually had the funeral and then they should be all finished up and gone by the time I get done loading this next truck. I was trying to be respectful and productive at the same time, so that's why I was kind of in a hurry on that first one, but I told you I'd show you what we're working with here. We call this chert, where we're at, C-H-I-R-T, and this is what it is. There is some sand, some clay, some stone in there. You guys see that? Some different size stone, and it works great. Great for base rock. We get a lot of people that uh, will come and say that's not going to work at all. Well, half the county, everything on the hills is base rocked with this stuff. Everything down in the valleys is base rocked with creek rock. So half the county's roads are based with this, and it, it does hold up really well. It packs very, very nice. In fact, today is the perfect day to haul it. It likes just a little bit of moisture in it whenever you're working with it. Over here, and you check out some of these layers. I don't know how well it shows up on camera. But you can see all the different layers in here. There's this one thin layer of this darker material. And then down here it gets into like a, a sandstone, a very loose sandstone down here on the bottom. And you can see all the different layers of chert through there. Uh, it would be so cool to get a geologist or somebody that knows what they're talking about down here sometime and actually go over this stuff with us and kind of explain where it came from and the history behind it. There's a lot of stories to be told and stuff like that. And we would love to find somebody that can tell us those stories. Speaking of stories, let's get this stuff in there.
take the 755, see if we can't fix all our whoop de doos here. Get all the whoop de doos and whoop de don'ts out of that real quick. problem we ran into this time. This big old chunk came down and started clawing it up. You see how she's now coming out right there. I don't know if this whole spreading the church thing is going to work out. I just don't know if it is. Number three. How you doing? How you doing? How y'all doing? Y'all doing all right. How you doing? Ma'am, how are you? Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just, nope, just going into this machine. You guys are fine. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Now, that's some parkour if I've ever seen some. Nice job, young lady. Alrighty.
So at this point, I'm kind of done trying to back spread. It just keeps clogging up in here. So we're just gonna dump a little push, dump a little push. The whole reason earlier we were trying the back spread thing was because it's just kind of wet this morning still, so it's trying to stay on good material. But, but it has dried out quite a bit through the day, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull in on this next one and go ahead and give it a go. Spreading forwards. What's the worst that could happen? better. Let's go knock it off for the tractor then we'll just back across it once and we should be able to do that on the next pass too. See if this magic button in the cab works. We got a magic button here. We got a magic button. Let's see if this magic button does what we need it to do.
in all honesty, this does happen from time to time. When you're building roads and there's not a road there, you're just going to get hung up. That's the way it works. But I'll walk you through the steps I use for this scenario. Now, traction is not really the issue here. The issue is that front axle has sunk down, so it's kind of chalked itself. That truck does has lockers. You guys saw me put the lockers in or engage the lockers. First step always in a dump truck is I, I raise the bed to try to get more traction on those drive tires and less weight on the front. That didn't quite work. So the next step is to just get that front axle built up and out of that hole because that's what's holding us back. So right now I got the brake holding it back and I'll get some good material shoved down in front. That's the handy thing about building roads. You typically have decent material in the box. Then I'll push it forward, have the parking brake hold it, and then I can get material up underneath the tire. It doesn't show up in this angle, but the tire is about an inch off the bottom of the ground. It's all the weight of that front end's resting on the front side of that tire. And you can see that helps get it up out of the ground, but we're obviously still spinning. You can kind of hear that. So you just keep repeating the process until you get that axle built up enough that it'll pull itself out. Mike and I love giving each other a hard time every time we get hung up. But like I said, if you're doing anything off-road, logging, farming, building roads, construction, whatever, every now and then you're going to get hung up. That's just kind of part of it. The biggest thing is just go slow. Don't tear anything up. And if you think you need help, just call for that help. But I was pretty confident that we had a pretty good shot with the material we had on hand. So if everything voiceover Mike said is true, and we had that front end built up the way we need it, which that should be it, we should be able to crawl right out of here. Let's see if I was right. Let's find out. You guys feel that riding right here? You really, I need you to, I really need you to hold on though, okay? I really need you to, to hold on tight, please. That's pretty exciting. Now, just because we're out of the hole doesn't mean we're out of the woods, pun intended. You always want to check underneath, just to make sure there's nothing crazy going on. Especially on this truck, it used to be a county truck, so it's got the snow plow set up on front, so there are some low hanging hoses. You just want to make sure nothing got snagged or torn or ripped. It looks pretty good, I don't see anything. Let's get that load uh, spread out, we'll go get some more. That last trip definitely proved that we're out of room to spread forward. So I'm just going to dump half load, push it off, dump half load, push it off. I just want to make sure that my chains were off. That would certainly be embarrassing. So this is the start of day three. We've just been hauling for a couple hours each day. It's not that far from the house. Mike's got this basement job going on, so I've been trying to squeeze in a few hours for him. 
This morning we're pouring footers, and after we get the footers poured, I'm gonna pull off and go haul. I'm hoping at least two more loads to the house. This is kind of random. The whole point is, if you're not on Dirt Perfect's channel, which I know all of you already are, but if there's one person that's not, be sure to go over to Mike's channel. And if you are on his YouTube channel already, then this is a little bit of a spoiler alert and a little bit of a tease of some content he's got coming up of this awesome, awesome basement job. We're just waiting on the third truck and then we'll get up and haul some more shirts. All right, so footers went great. We got the last truck off. That sounds a little different, I guess. That sounds a little weird. Anyway, we've got the last truck emptied and uh, we're gonna get this fired up this morning. We already checked fluid, so we know we're good there. So we got four more loads hauled. You guys can see them there. One, two, three, four. Brought a little bit of go-go juice out for the 755, so I get it topped off. She's kind of starting to run on fumes. We're going to, uh, oops, spilled a little bit. That's okay, that's fine. Keep the asphalt from sticking. Anyway, get a little feel in this tractor and see if we can get this stuff spread out. It feels like, or looks like, seven o'clock but it's not it's it's only three o'clock winter time the winter time am i right it's crazy i was just putting fuel in the tractor and i was looking down at the youtube yet footers where i had them laid off and staked off with a string and uh i'm noticing something i think it needs a little further investigation but my four corner posts or four corner markers are gone my center one is still there but my four markers on the side are gone they've been knocked over and the string seems to be meandering through the woods. I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing, let's look for some tracks. Something really fell in love with that. There's got to be some tracks of some kind. Let's see where the string ended up. Something ran off with my string. Well, what's that? Oh, that's the dog. <laughs> I don't know. What are you going to do? I guess, uh, I guess I'll guess i wrap this up on a stick or something. <laughs> All you can do is laugh about it. There's YouTube outside up there, and there's the doggo. There's the doggo. How you doing, sweetie? How you doing, sweetie? You got burrs? Look at all the burrs on you. Look at all the burrs. All right, let's get that material pushed off. 
We'll just have to solve this mystery another day. So we just got the tractor put up in the barn. There's the sun setting through the trees over Mogan Ridge on that side. And then there's this beautiful ridge line through the trees on that side. And if you look real close, you can see the pond reflecting through the trees there. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna slap you on the ranger and run up and down this real quick so you guys can kind of see the finished product. For the base rock, of course, we are gonna put a white topstone on top of this. This is just the base rock. The reason we use it, like I said in the video, just a whole lot cheaper. Listen, what I wanted to say before we finish this whole video out is thank you guys for all the support. This whole project of building the YouTube yacht, the rental cabin in the shape of a paddle wheeler boat, the whole project, we're planning on using YouTube revenue to pay for it. And up to this point, we have been able to do that. And that's because you guys are watching the videos, you're watching the ads, you're hitting that like button, you're leaving comments, you're telling your friends and family about the channel. You guys are absolutely amazing and we are so so lucky and so thankful to have such an amazing supportive little youtube family so when i say we couldn't do this without you i really truly mean that so when i say thank you and we say thank you understand that, that is something also that we definitely absolutely mean i guess that's everything i have to say for this i hope you guys enjoyed the video come to tell them goodbye she came to tell you goodbye as well thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one